Tiffany here, and I love this display. I'm with Chelsea of honeylove.org, and I love your Beelzebub. Tell me what you do. Um, we're a 501c3 nonprofit based out of LA, and we're all about uh, educating and inspiring new urban beekeepers. And right now we're working with the city to try and legalize urban beekeeping in Los Angeles and try and just educate the masses on why we need bees and the difference between a bee and a wasp and, you know, easy ways that they can help. Why is it not legalized and is it legalized in other places? Absolutely. We're one of the last major cities in the world that hasn't legalized What? It. Yeah. How could that be? We're Los Angeles. <laughs> <laughs> because no one's taking the time to go through and make it legal. I think it was after World War II when they didn't want this to be farmland anymore, they made it city land. So they took out all the farming ordinances, which slowly but surely we're putting back into our laws. But it takes the time of going council to council and making sure that people want it. And so we're starting a grassroots effort. So far we've had seven community councils in LA say yes to us. And this month we are up at Studio City. Yay, and, and what, what kind of input do you need? You have seven, how many more do you need to actually make it happen? We're trying to get about 10%. There are 95 councils in LA, so 10%, we're just about there. So we've already got a motion set. Um, we're working with Councilman Bill Rosendahl, who runs the, um, the district over on the west side by us. And uh, we're hoping to make this happen. Uh, it's such a great cause. And so tell me, I, I love bees and I had bees at my house and, and I have a little video of that and, um, you know, I saved them. And but what people don't really know, I think people just swat a bee if they see it or they're afraid they're going to get stung by a bee. So tell me about the benefits of bees and some of the differences between bees and like say a wasp. Right. Yeah. Most people have a bad association with a wasp. They think it was yellow and black and it stung me. It stung me multiple times. And I'm so scared of it. And I'm so scared <laughs> of it. But I mean, the number one sign that that wasn't a bee and it was a wasp is a bee can only sting you once. A wasp can sting multiple times. Big differences between bees and wasps. There's, um, you know, bees are much better at pollinating because they're fuzzy. And what they do is they'll flap their little wings and go from flower to flower. And during that flight, they'll create electric, uh, static electricity. And that makes them fuzzy. And so when they land on the flower, all the pollen sticks to them. So they're really great. But the wasps are not fuzzy. So they're not as great at pollinating. They're also, um, they're predators. They're not vegetarian like honeybees. And um, I mean, bees are not aggressive. They're not looking to sing you absolutely they're a benefit to the society. So. And they're so necessary. I mean, what, they pollinate... 80%. Uh, 80% 80 of the world's plants. 80% of the world's plants. Including at least 90 oh, different food crops. There's one right there, right? It smells like uh, honey and wax in here, so he's oh. like, this looks like a good home. Wow. Actually, she's like, this looks like a good home. That is a girl bee. How do you know? Um, most bees are girls. Really? Yep, you can tell it's a... A little bit. Um, the male bees are called drones. They're much fatter. Ah! Okay. <laughs> I, don't, I love them, but I'm scared of them. Oh, my God, that's so funny. And that's on camera. Great. <laughs> okay, wait, you mentioned that the male bees are called drones. Mm -hmm. That's perfect. Why is that? <laughs> um, that's just what they're called. Um, back in the day, actually, it was... Uh, Queen Elizabeth's beekeeper was Charles Butler, and he was the one who realized it wasn't a king bee, but a queen bee. And so once all of that started going, they started looking into the different types of, you know, the different types of bees and stuff. And so the drones are the male bees. That's so funny. And how ironic that that's their name. Hmm. What does that mean? I love it. Save the queen. A petition on our website. You can sign um, honeylove.org. There's a, a little link through change.org to legalize urban beekeeping. And we'd love for you to click on it. Absolutely. Will do. Oh, I did want to say one thing. So on my stairwell, I see a lot of kind of periodically dead bees and I get really sad and I wonder why are they dead on what happened to my stairwell that they're there <laughs> <laughs> um, city bees are actually the healthiest stock of bees we have left on the planet right now um, CCD colony collapse disorder one third of our bee colonies have died in the last three years but that's because of the way we do our farming monocultures and pesticides and all of that out in the farmland but our city bees we don't do that I don't have pesticides in my garden you probably don't have pesticides in your garden nope so the bees kind of get a get out of a jail free card <laughs> in that respect um, but what you see of the walking bees are actually the grandma bees bees other than the queen bee that can live five to seven years the um, the little worker bees only live like six weeks in the summertime so the ones that have worn their wings out are walking back to the hive and they're just going to be the guard bees at the front of the hive. But those are the grandmas, so you should be nice to those bees. Oh, my gosh. Be nice to your senior citizen. That is the funniest thing. I didn't even know there were grandma bees. That's 
Grandma Wild. Bees. So much information that you can find out on the bees. So go to honeylove.org. And thank you so much for Chelsea and for what you do. It's really great. And we'll see you again on Green with Tiffany.